quiet down guys. I'm doing a video here. Duh. What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the most controversial subject of all, references. <gasps> so two weeks ago, I did an art challenge where I drew random things from my imagination without the use of any references. And somebody in the comments gave me a great idea. Can you try to draw these with references and show us the difference? I went ahead and I tried it out and it really got me thinking about references. I'm pretty sure there's still this notion out there amongst old timers that references are cheating and you should never do that. If you want something to be your own artwork, you've got to do it from imagination. And that's ridiculous. I'm going to pull up these results real quick and let you guys decide for yourself the difference that reference can make. And by the end of this video, I'll also talk about situations where you shouldn't use a reference. So here we go. These are some of the images that I drew based on a word prompt without the use of any reference material. So this is purely from my mental library. You can clearly tell what all of these things are. And I'd like to think that I have a pretty solid mental library. Here's the second page with some drawings of people, a dog, a beetle, a year, and a very goofy master Uguay. And here's the last page. We don't talk about this. But then I went on Pinterest. I found some references. And check this out. This is my bear without a reference. And at the bottom here is my bear with a reference. I think in the original without the reference, I got the body down pretty closely to what a bear would actually look like. And I don't know why I know that. I don't know why I know what a bear looks like. But let's bring our attention down here. And I think the most notable difference is here in the bear's face, in the head structure. Some of the biggest differences are the shape of the head, a lot more accurate to what a bear actually looks like, and the shape and angle of the neck. And something else that I noticed when I was drawing this is that the butt, the bear butt. When I looked at pictures, they have this very steep slope that comes down down like this and when I'm drawing from my imagination just from memory some of these cues are just completely lost and they're just not there besides that I think you're also gonna see that there's a lot more confidence in my line work in general especially in the face area because now I know what I'm doing is correct so the main difference is confidence in line work and anatomical correctness but this is just the tip of the iceberg this is just warm up for us let me show you some more pieces that are gonna blow your mind. Take a look at this one, for example. The original prompt was whale, and I chose to draw a humpback whale, one of my favorite whale species. The other one is sperm whale. This is what I was able to do with a reference. Take a look, for example, at the anatomy of this whale versus the one up above, at the details that you might see on this whale versus the one up above. And again, we're gonna go back to line confidence, right? We know what we're looking at here. I know what I'm doing is correct. So much more feeling of confidence in terms of my line work. Now, some people might say that this is just because I spent more time on this drawing than I did with the one up above. But here's the thing. If you're drawing something purely based on your mental library, you only have access to a very small amount of information stored in your brain about that subject. If you asked me to draw this humpback whale without a reference and you gave me unlimited time, the absolute best I could do is not gonna be much better than this. Because all of that information, the detail, the attention to the anatomy, that's just not there in my brain. It's not part of my mental library. But see, the moment you're able to bring in some external help from the real world and you can observe how it actually looks, then translating all of that information into your drawing become so much more effective and efficient. Not only that, you're also gonna be learning in the process. And here's a beetle that I drew without any reference. I'd say this one's pretty good actually. And now here is a beetle that I drew with a reference. So in this case, it's not the biggest difference ever, but again, there's just a lot more confidence and I was able to actually learn the anatomy of a beetle. I don't know when that's ever gonna be useful to me, but now this one's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna blow your pants off. So here's the original Master Uwe Turtoys that I drew without the help of a reference. And there is the sketch I was able to create using a reference. You see the difference here? It's so much more confident. Let's not talk about the face for a second, but you guys see a lot of these lines lines like this and some of these lines on the outer shell, they're kind of searching. They're not the most confident like, boom, this is where it's gonna go. But then you come down here and let's look at this shell, right? This is a very, very confident divide right here. Very, very confident lines here. Even the overall shape of the shell, look at this line, look at these lines that are up here. Personally, if I didn't know anything about the background of these two pieces and you just showed them to me side by side, I might've actually assumed that they were done by the same person, but years apart after a lot of improvement. But that's not the case. This was actually done two weeks apart. And the craziest part is now that I've done this sketch here, the next time that you ask me to draw from memory and try to recreate something like this, my drawing of this guy would actually improve dramatically because now there are some elements that I'm able to retain 
from this drawing down here. Like for example, the angle of the legs. This is one of the things that really stood out to me, just the weight, the feeling of the weight. The moment you add that reference into your toolkit is the moment that you're also adding that information into your mental library. Unless you're kind of dumb, but don't worry, I am too. It's okay. Here's another great example of the confidence that you gain from looking at and observing and learning from the thing that you're supposed to be drawing. I mean, look at this drawing. I've got the general shape down, yes, but some of these areas are a little bit muddy, right? It's a little bit confusing to look at. I gave this person's year an extra hole here, but look at this reference. There's just one hole there. And overall, as a whole, you know, I would say the structure of this one makes so much more sense. It's nowhere near as confusing. You can still tell this is a year, but this one, that's a year. And when we do talk about these comparisons, when we are talking about this process, something else that I want you guys to keep in mind is that I've been drawing for a very long time. And because of that, I've had so many chances to draw things and sketch things that a beginner or intermediate artist might have just not been able to get to. So with that being said, there's definitely a lot more information in my mental library than there is in the mental library of a newer artist. Even so, look at the difference. And this one's going to be wild. So here's the original drawing without a reference. I would say this is pretty good. This is pretty solid. You know, we've got the general anatomy of a human down, but now let's take a look at the piece that I did with a reference. Boom! The prompt was people at the beach and I decided to draw somebody holding a surfboard. And the piece done with a reference, you can just see so much more confidence in the anatomy, in the pose. It looks more natural. You're also getting more perspective. But see, when you use a reference, you, you're able to just focus on what you see learn from what you see. The best artists that I know who are just absolute anatomy gods, guess how they got there? They studied people from real life, from pictures. If you were to show these to me without any context, I would have assumed that these might've been done by the same person, but many, many years apart. Here's another great set. This one was done without a reference. This one was done with a reference. Again, same concept, right? Jack dude holding a surfboard, but look at the the confidence in this one, in the pose, in the anatomy, even the facial expression here, it's truly a night and day difference. And I would say that I'm generally pretty confident in my anatomy, but having that help there, having that visual aid, it just makes your drawing that much better. This is a no reference chicken. I can tell it's a no reference chicken. And there's our chicken done with a reference. It looks edible. So if you did follow along with me in our last video, now I want you to go and try this out. Go find a reference for yourself and see the difference that it actually makes, especially with things that you're not as familiar with. You're gonna be very surprised how many new things that you're gonna learn about your subject by just looking at a picture and trying to draw it. And last but not least, here's our Sheba. Charming little guy, really happy with how this drawing turned out. It's not too much I would change about it, but here, let me show you. Here's an updated version of this Sheba drawn with a reference. This one's probably a little bit more of a stylized look. It's not as accurate. And this one is a lot more accurate, a lot more believable. It's more grounded, more anatomical accuracy. Look at how big of a difference that made, even for an artist like me who has been drawing for so many years. So if you've ever been told by someone in the past that references are cheating, that somehow pieces made with the help of a reference are less deserving of being called art. I mean, to each their own beliefs, but that kind of gatekeeping mindset that if you do this, you're not a real artists, if you draw with a reference, you're not making real art, that stuff's got to stop. Okay, let's just embrace the things that help us learn. Here's another interesting thing that this got me thinking about. When I was younger, I used to draw in my sketchbook and sometimes I'd be fixing the same thing over and over and trying to get it perfect for hours at a time. And I thought, hey, if I just spent more time on this piece, it's going to get better. And it did not. <laughs> it's all about what's in your mental library. And if you're drawing something and you're like, I'm just stuck on this. I've been working on this one thing for the past three hours and it's just not turning out the way I wanted to. I would ask you to take a step back and understand that maybe this thing is just not in your mental library. You might just not have enough visual information in your brain to be able to draw that thing effectively. And that's perfectly fine. Very few of us do. So in that case, go on Pinterest, go look up the thing that you're drawing and go find that reference to help you out. It's a quick, effortless process to immediately make your art better. It's actually like an art hack and it's not cheating because guess what? Everybody has to learn from the real world. And if you're like, man, I just can't, I can't draw a hand for the life of me. So I'm going to just avoid it. Don't do that. Don't try to force it either. If you can't draw a hand, just admit that you can't draw a hand. That thing is just not in your mental library. Go look up a reference of a hand or better yet, go look at your own hand. Look at how it's built and try to draw that learn from that. It's so annoying, like watching these TikTok art hacks, like you put orange on the face and then put some purple inside it. And now, oh, wow, blush. Stop it. It doesn't make your art better. But you know what does? 
References. So when should we not use references? When should we avoid references? Well, it depends on what you're doing. If you're trying to test out your mental capacity for visual information, the best way to do that is to find a subject and try to draw without a reference and see how much you actually know about it. But here's something else that I read recently that was very interesting to me. So I got this book recently on Hayao Miyazaki. If you don't know him, he is the genius, the big brain behind Studio Ghibli. And in the book, it said that oftentimes he would go into his drawings without a reference. He would try to draw his creatures, his character designs, purely from memory. Despite the fact that because of that, they became a little bit less accurate because that lack of accuracy, that kind of fantastical, whimsical look is exactly what he was aiming for. His sketches, his designs, they were purely from memory because he wanted to give them a feel of something slightly unfamiliar. And I definitely personally attest to that because if you look at these Shiba drawings here, while this one is more anatomically accurate, it is more confident, it is more technically impressive, the one that you see up here, this one's got a certain level of charm to it. You know, it's got a little bit of personality. It's not fully accurate. It's nowhere near 100% anatomically correct. But you know what? It kind of works. It's a purely stylized version of your own memory. And I do think there is something beautiful to that. If you are trying to capture something accurately, trying to make it believable, you should use a reference. If you're trying to learn about a subject and improve in drawing a certain subject, you should use a reference. When you're learning things, you should always be using reference. You know what they say, learn the rules before you break them. And that completely applies here. When you get to a certain level where your mental library is so brimming with information and you wanna break this rule to use it to your benefit like Hayao Miyazaki does. When you're at that level, then yes, absolutely try to draw things without references to capture that more whimsical feeling. But if you just don't have any information in your brain to begin with, like me, using references is gonna help you out so much in your art, okay? And do not shy away from so I really hope that this video has been insightful. I hope that seeing all of these different drawings with and without references can give you a better understanding of just how much of a difference this can make in your art. At the end of the day, I just want to help you guys get better at art so that we can all enjoy cool things to look at. Anyways, that's it. I don't even know what I'm going to title this video, but hope this has helped you out. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like, share with your friends who need help. And there's only two weeks left to back my book on Kickstarter. So go check that out. And yeah, I'll see you on the next video. <laughs> Talking too much. <laughs> I'm very passionate about this topic because when I was a little boy, I was told that references are cheating and you would not believe how long that held me back. That like just took so many years off my progress. So now we're doing the, the Lord's work. We're educating the youth. I just hope that the next generation doesn't take this too extremely. I don't want there to be people in like 40 years, you know, the new generation of boomers that are gonna be like, if you don't use a reference, you're not a real artist. I feel like that's probably going to happen. Or not. Maybe in 50 years, there won't be any more artists left because AI. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh.